I opened a lot of doors, you know, when I when I started when I started working with Charles Bronson and and uh, Val Kilmer and Robert De Niro, and you know, it was like, whoa! Now there's a lot of there's there's a lot more Hispanic actor. This book titled Trejo, My Life of Crime, Redemption, and Hollywood really got to deep dive on your life, your battles of addiction, your time in jail, personal life, and movie career. We cannot talk about you being a game changer without speaking about your upbringing. Talk to me about Uncle Gilbert and the significance he had in your life growing up. When I was with my Uncle Gilbert, it was like life was cool. You know, life was great. So he was sick. I didn't know it. I didn't know he was addicted to heroin. And I was gonna be 13 and God, I remember he, he gave me a drop. It was like one of the most beautiful days of my life. I tried to stay that way. He asked me if I had any problems. I don't know. I just didn't like the way I was growing up. I didn't like what was happening around me. I hated confrontation. You understand? I would rather fight than argue because I could fight, you know, but arguing you build up to a fight and so i will suck somebody first better and that's what gilbert taught me how to do he was the biggest part of my growing up really he was an armed robber and a drug addict that's that's what i did it's funny it was well you mean he abused you as no you, you, well you don't think giving marijuana to an eight-year-old's abuse you don't think giving heroin's to a 12 year old's abuse i thought no i thought it was sharing i mean he was <laughs> You've been in every jail in LA with all types of violent felonies. You're finally released from jail in 1968. Then you end up speaking at a Cocaine Anonymous meeting and you meet this kid who shifted your future and began your extra career. How did that happen? Everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. And I I, I was working with this one kid trying to get off of cocaine and he was a, a production assistant on a movie. He got me into trying to be an extra. So I walk on this movie set of a movie called Runaway Train. This guy looks at me and goes, hey, you wanna be an extra? I said, extra what? Can you act like a convict? I thought, I've been in every prison in the state of California. I'll, I'll give it a shot. And when I took off my shirt, I got a big tattoo on my chest. And this guy said, hey, you're Danny Trejo. And I go, yeah, you're Eddie Bunker. I knew this guy in prison. And he said, Danny, are you still boxing? I saw you win the lightweight and the welterweight title up in Quinton. I go, no, man, I'm 40 years old. I don't fight no more. He said, we need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. Now they were giving me 50 bucks for acting like a convict. And we laughed because we've been acting like convicts all our lives for free. I said, what's it pay? And he says, 320 a day. And so I started training an actor named Eric Roberts how to box. Eric respected me, so he would do whatever I told him to do. And the director saw that and said, you be in movie, you fight Eric in movie. And then he goes, and you be my friend. If you've got a prison background, you don't trust people that say, you be my friend, you know? But Andre gave me a sad card and my whole life changed there. You go on to do more acting work, but the role seems to be all the same. Inmate number one or convict number one, did it ever bother you being typecast as a Hispanic villain all the time? I didn't even know I was being typecast. And then I remember the first time I got interviewed, she said, Danny, don't you feel you'd be in typecast? What's that? I, I didn't really understand. She said, well, you know, you're being stereotyped as the mean Chicano dude. I thought about it. I said, I am the mean Chicano dude. And I got tattoos, you know, and, and if she didn't know what to say because I was going with what I got. You know, look at me. It's like, I'm. it's going to be tough to be the leading man and get the girl. It took me a long time before I started getting roles. In fact, the first role I got that I even had a shirt on because the director was, oh, take off your shirt. And then he'd say, say something like prison-y. And I'd say, te vamos a matar todo. You know, and they, oh my God, Danny. Where did you study? You know, it was like, they think of, I studied in San Quentin. Did you face any obstacles around that time as, as a Mexican American, but also as a convict? You know what? It's funny. It's like Edward Bunker, he said, Danny, the whole world can think you're a movie star, but you can't. And you have to disarm people immediately. I always be the first to say hello. And I'll raise my hand. Hey, hi, how you doing? I got to let people know that I'm not the guy you think I am. I've had a couple of problems with people, but I just pull them aside and tell them, you know what, look, Holmes, don't, I'm not Hollywood. You know, don't, you know, 
give me respect, I'll give you respect. If you don't, you know, we're men. And they kind of like realize, oh, okay. I don't want to get beat to death. <laughs> but now, you know, when I walk on set, even the even the big guys go, hey, what's up, Joe? What's up? What was I doing? Oh, have you worked with Bob De Niro? Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, I worked with Bob De Niro. <laughs> Choices we made to survive. Got Mundo, JD, and me 10 to 25. What made you turn down American Me and do Blood In and Blood Out instead, where you gained major recognition in acting? The Mexican American community loved you. I got asked to be in both American Me and Blood In, Blood Out. And I liked the script for Blood In, Blood Out. I didn't like the fact that there were some things in American Me that weren't true and that were too close to home, to the real thing. So me and Eddie Bunker, who was the guy that got me into the movies, right? And that I knew from San Quentin, that knew the Mexican mafia. We both grew up with the Mexican mafia. I had a meeting with Edward James at a place called Jerry's Deli in Encino. The first thing we ask him is, is, is Eddie, almost, have you have you cleared this with Joe? Joe Morgan, leader of the Mexican mafia, right? He goes, yeah, 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 no, no, I got it, I got it covered. I've seen him up in Palm Hall and yeah, blah, 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 blah. I went home and I got a call from my cousin Sal and he called me and said, hey, Danny, hey, do you know Joe Morgan? I go, yeah. He's like, are you okay, Danny? Okay? Yeah, what are you talking about? He said, well, he, he wants to talk to you and it's Joe Morgan calling me from Palm Hall. He said, hey, Holmes, uh, I hear that you had a meeting with uh, Edward James. Now he's in prison. That's how fast he learned. I didn't call him, neither did Eddie, but he learned I had a meeting with Edward James. You're up for it, huh? I go, I'm up for both of them. I'm, I'm up for blood in, blood out, too. He says, which one are you gonna do, Danny? And I said, uh, I'm gonna do uh, blood in, blood out. Almost. He said, Danny, you know, you know, you could do the other one, and we got enough respect for you. But uh, you know, pero I say, hey, Joe, I'm not disrespecting homies. I know. So when Eddie told us that he uh, had talked to him, it was a lie. You know, he got in a lot of trouble behind that movie. You can't disrespect nobody, and Edward James openly disrespect. He won't accept it. He won't say, you know what, I was wrong. I was wrong, I did, I shouldn't have done that. But see, we didn't disrespect anybody from blood in, blood out. We didn't say that this guy got raped. We didn't say that this guy did this. We were, if we're gonna say something, it's gonna be true to what happened. Machete was your first starring role, 25 years in the making. How did it feel and what was going on in your head knowing you were able to play the first Mexican-American action superhero? It was just unbelievable. It was like, you know what, I, 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 I think even the people that didn't like me or didn't accept me as an actor, they, they said, well, he's a phenomenon, he's an ex con they had to say, yeah, no, this guy's you know, for real. Robert Rodriguez had told me about Machete when we did Desperado. And we talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. And in Spy Kids, we called him Uncle Machete. And so when I did Machete, I almost broke into tears when in Halloween, that all the kids came to me and I look, they had their little painted mustache on and, and their little fake knife. Who are you? They go, I'm Machete. <laughs> I swear to God, it's like it was like, you know, look at this. This is unreal. Do you feel like doors are opening more for Latinos in film now than ever before? Absolutely. I think we got to get more executive producers. We got to get more people with money to make more Latin-based movies. The Latinos with the money don't want to start making movies. So stop crying about there's not enough Latinos in cinema. Let's put some money together and make a movie. And we'll make it all Mexicano. And then maybe bring like, like two people that aren't of color. Come on, you be our token white guys. <laughs>